And this first hour is dedicated to Yishi yet again, who will complete the course on spectrum rigidity. Enjoy. Okay, uh, thank you, Boris. And thank you. And I think like this uh, last talk of my course, and in, in, in today, I, I will talking not talking about uh, analysis of diffeomorphism anymore. I, I will talking about the uh, analysis of maps on the torus. And so, and it's basically actually like, uh, I think this topic started from maybe uh, Mike Shu, and then it's by uh, Mani and the Pew, and then like uh, typically by uh, by Felix and in his thesis, and it's a, a it's a topic about like almost a half century ago, and some something like that, and in and during um studies the things about uh, like uh, uh, analysis of diffeomorphism on torus, like uh, uh, especially like in something in dimension three, and it has been discovered like uh, for for analysis of maps is. Uh, like uh, more or less and uh, close to the higher dimensional analysis of diffusions. Okay, uh, Felix is comes and they say, yes. So basically a lot of these topics, so you, you will see his name uh, on the slides and a lot of things like following him, is following him. Okay, and okay. Now we, we have showed a lot about the slides and I think like, uh, Everyone is very familiar with the definition of uh, analysis of diffeomorphisms, and we know like that. But I still want to say something about like the stable bundle and unstable bundles of of this uh, of this split because like okay and right and this is uh, two one 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 and uh, we will see more like, like in, in this talk because we will discuss about the three one 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 and the four one 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 and something like that. Okay. So, and typically for analysis of diffeomorphisms, and we know like there's, let's take some confute of the stable and unstables. And we know like if you take the, okay, uh, pictures here. And if you know like it's some, something very well known and you know like your dynamics is like for X and you take something to by F to FX. And you know like that this, let's put it is expanding and this is a contracting and this expanding and this contracting. So, and you know, like if you take a confute here and also with some confute here with a fixed angle, and you know, like this confute after iteration, it will become something smaller, right? It will become something like this smaller. So basically for, for this confute things, and you take a look at X and you look at its negative orbits. So at something like F minus of X and you take the confutes, and you you acting by df and it will become something smaller and actually you take look at the f minus two of x and it's something maps here smaller and then comes something more and more smaller so basically you, you know like for this and also for diffeomorphisms and you can see like actually your stable bundles actually is this is determined actually by the positive orbits take all this confute along its positive orbits and you iterate it back and take the intersection and the intersection is actually give you the stable bundle. And for the unstable bundle, actually you can string the negative orbits and you take the in intersection and it gives you the uh, unstable bundle. So basically you can say something like the, po the stable bundle is actually determined by its positive orbits and the unstable bundle is determined by its negative orbits. And this is, you will see like this part is crucial, it's different with analysis of maps, which is non -rotable. Okay, and, and let's recall some classical results, which are about the st uh, structure stability of uh, analysis of diffeomorphisms. And we all know like actually, it is structurally stable. That means like for any F, which is C1 close to A, you can find a homeomorphism, which is close to identity. And you make this, it is actually maps the orbits of F to the orbits of A. And okay. And yes, and we know like actually any area loss of diffeomorphism is structurally stable. And the proof is simple. I just like to recall something and just say like you, you know like your F and A are very close. So actually like you can have some, any F orbits for some X is any F orbits is actually a pseudo orbits of your original A, right? Because like for every every steps you X move to, to AX and actually for, for A is something close to FX. 
So for this f, and the orbits of uh, x on, on, on the action of f is actually a pseudo orbits of a. And then you can take the things like very classical things, and you can actually for the lambda to be an eigenvalue of a, and you actually, you know, like you can find a unique point which we denoted by hx such that the a orbit of hx actually satisfies these things. Like the a, or, uh, the a orbit of hx is shadowing the orbit of x on f, right? The proof is quite simple. Actually, you just look at the rectangle, right? You look at a rectangle around every fx. When this close and you put a rectangle, you map it back, it will become something like long. Uh, oh, sorry, it's become something like this. It's more horizontal. And you map again, and it will intersect something. It's actually the stable direction. And you can string the negative orbits, and it will gives you like more intersections in the unstable direction. And the, the unique intersection points is actually the shielding orbits. That, that is the structural stability things. And you know, like that in, in this part, is, is I think like uh, it is actually the unique point whose a orbit is contained in a neighborhood of the f orbit of x. And so this gives you actually that's the unique point. The orbit is contained in a neighborhood. And also, on the other hand, you know, like that uh, if you're acting by a of hx, this point is orbit also shadowing the orbit of fx. So this makes you, you have this commuting, the commuting things. Okay, and also you know, like since your 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 f itself is some kind is unknown and so it is expensive, and you actually you know like these things to be is actually the you like the unique thing, right? And also you know like it is continuous and close to identity, and you can show like it is a homomorphism. Yeah, I, I think this is something very very well known. And okay, and we can have some remarks. It's like if you have some f which is t two to t two, and you just need to be continuous, and its linear part is also to, to one one also and also and you know like you can have but here because you have no more information of f you don't know it is homomorphism anymore you just know it is a continuous subjective map such that makes this also like it is uh, commuting and actually in this time you just constrain the lift of uh, of your f and you can write it as this right you, you have an ax and your phi x is some kind of z2 periodic so it's uniformly bounded and you can see it is something a big perturbation of A, but your A is globally hyperbolic. You can make the rectangle as big as you want, and you can play the game again. And actually, you can get some kind of conjugacy first on R2, and you show like it's something commuting with deck transformation, and it gives you like actually you, you can put it on T2. That's the thing. And also, there's something we have already mentioned, like on, on the torus, you, you always conjugate to your linear part, not some old things. Okay, now let's move to Anosov map. Okay, we, we say a local D field. During this talk, when I say Anosov map, you, I always mean it's non invoked. Okay, you can say it's like endomorphisms, and it's a local D field, and it's Anosov, and you have a continuous D, DF invariant subbundle that's the stable bundle. And such that it is in this bundle, you are uniformly contracting, which is also the same. But in, in this case, you, you are, don't have the unstable bundle. What you have is like you can considering the quotient map of this of this DF, and it's actually induce an expanding map on the quotient bundles that is uniformly expanding along the quotient bundle. The key point here is why we don't have the unstable bundle is just as explained before, like because right now your negative orbits is not unique. You may have one point, you may have several pre-images and every step you have a lot. And in, in this setting, things like you couldn't, you don't know which negative orbits you choose. And this makes you, okay, you may not have the unstable bundle. What you have is like, you just constrain quotient map is uniformly expanded. On the other hand, maybe also you can say something like you may have a cone field transverse with a stable. And in this cone field, you iterated positively invariant and uniformly expanding in this cone field. I think it, it will be the same. Also, on the other hand, like by, by, by the end, here this show like actually you are an Anosov map if and only if in the universal cover you are an Anosov D field. Okay, you are in Anosov D. Yeah. 
and later uh, Felix gives the definition and but just in the orbit space. Okay, we look look at a local D field and we say it's an Anderson map if we look and string in the orbit space. You, you see like in the orbit space is actually the infinite product of M, but it's actually a closed subset such that for, for it's actually a, a world of points in M. And for every steps you maps F X I is equal to X I plus one. And in this orbit space, and you, you have a splitting on, on every point, you will have a splitting such that for this splitting, you are actually DF invariant. And for this splitting, you, you have the stable bundle and unstable bundle. And in the stable bundle is uniformly contracting and unstable bundle is uniformly expanding. And actually for, for this, because in, in here you have the orbit space. So actually what you do is you fix the negative orbits. So this is why you, you can have the unstable bound. Yeah, but please notice that for some X, for example, for the X zero at the point, if you give two negative orbits, like your unstable bundle, if you project down on your M on the zero, zero word like on M, these two negative or uh, unstable bundles decided by two different negative orbits may be different. You may have a lot of unstable bundles. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, and let's give some very simple example. That is what I said. You put some N111 and you put like this to be larger or equal to three. And you can, some simple, simple calculation shows you like, actually it's like a, a covering map of the torus. So, and you know, like that it has an eigenvalue which is smaller than one and have an eigenvalue which is larger than one. And the, the degree of this map is n minus one. Okay, and, and this, but typically the thing is like in this map, actually you have the unstable manifolds, unstable bundles every, every point. And you should record like it's a special Anderson maps, but we will see later, we will see these things. And also you can see like for this AM, you make some small perturbations, you still have the stable foliation and you look at the quotient, quotient maps about in the tangent bundle, it is also uniformly expanding. So it is for some uh, maps, which is close to AM, it is also an Anosov map. And of course, like the Anosov maps construct is an uh, uh, open subset in all maps, okay? All maps, C1 topology. Okay, and actually it's some, some work about Aoki and Hirada in 1994. It's some, some very, very large book and we study these things and actually it's like the same two annals of diffeomorphisms. And also you have some linear, uh, hyperbolic linear uh, actions on, on the uh, first homology group. And actually here the matrix is like, a, it's not in GLDZ anymore. It's just a matrix and but and it's not invertible in, in, in the things. And also all its eigenvalues uh, have absolute values not equal to one. Some of them are smaller than one, some of them are larger. Yeah. And the fascinating thing for, for this thing is like, for all these Anosov non invertible Anosov maps, it is not structurally stable. It's totally different with Anosov maps. Okay, we, we will just give an illustration why it is. Actually, it's just because like you have a lot of different negative orbits. It's... Okay, that, that means was that not structurally stable. That means for any epsilon larger than zero and for any Anosov map, there exists some Anosov map which you can put it in infinite close to your A and there does not exist any homeomorphisms, homotopic identity, such that you have this commuting, the on T2 especially this is on T2. Okay, you don't have some any countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. and uh, actually it's, you can, yeah, as Felix said, actually prove like every non, but also map is not structurally stable unless it is uniformly expanded. Like you don't have the stable bundles. Yes, and actually Felix gives like, you, you even don't have conjugacy, not homotopy identity, any homotopy. 
Okay. Yes, and I, I will just illustrate the idea why it is not uh, structurally stable. Okay, and the, the perturbation is actually very very simple, and we just like okay, and we, we pick some points, and I, I will take like some zero points. I I just uh, prove it for n one one one, but for everything you will see the proof exactly the same, almost uh, just uh, but this is some local perturbation things, and you take some point which is I just put a zero which is equal to a zero and you know like it is some is a fixed point so you will have an obvious of your original a is that zero zero always zero right you have an obvious like that and you know like so it has two print images one print image is also itself also zero and you put another print image okay I, I will put it p here and what you do is uh what you do is like and you find some neighborhood, which is uh, some, some neighborhood for you to be here. That is your zero and that is your one. That's for P, they are totally small neighborhoods and they are disjoint. And you know like that uh, we can say like uh, for an orbit of P and you can take another, another orbit. And in this orbit, you know, like for P, you will have also two negative orbits, right? Uh, two pre images. And you can take an orbit, like at this point, it should be P and it will go to zero positively. And for negatively, you want to choose some orbits, like some orbits here, negative orbits, it will never enters this neighborhood. Okay, because like you have two, two print images, they are separated, you can always make that it will never enter this, this small neighborhood. Okay. Okay, and so that is, uh, and now we can make a small C infinite perturbation just in this neighborhood, because right now you, you have like some, you have something like this, the stable things, stable manifolds. And what you do is like, you just push along that things. That means originally you map this P to zero, but composed with some pushing along the stable, here you also have the stable, okay? You preserve the stable leaves and you map your P to something here, which I think I, I will denote it if I, Y1, I, I guess like, yes, Y0. And uh, so you will have some points, uh, okay, Y0 to be here. And uh, okay, this is called Y0 and that's to be something Y1. It's on the stable, originally stable manifolds of, uh, of zero points maps to here. Okay, so on the stable manifolds. So because you, your perturbation preserves the stable manifolds, your maps to here. And you can see like, because we don't any, put any perturbations on, on these parts. So zero is still the fixed point of your F. And so Y1 and after iteration, it will convert to zero, right? Because this is a still con uh, contracting the stable manifolds, it's something like that. So basically you have, an f orbit, which y i that in zero points this equal to p, and something like that. And for all negative orbits, the is equal uh, y i is equal to x i for negative orbits because your perturbation are in this small region, and but your negative orbits never enter here, so it never changes. Okay, it never changes, and yeah, that's the picture. Sorry, I I reverse it. So you push it here, and. Okay, and you can see like all the positive orbits of uh, y of p of f is in here, but it converges to that. So right now we have an a orbit of x i that is and an f orbit of y i. X i is there, right? Negative orbits never changes, and zero points they are also equal, but it is for for this uh, x i is equal to zero for positively, and y i is in the stable manifold. It's been Okay, you can see like for these two orbits, xi and yi are always close, are always close. So this makes you like, just as before, you make the shadows, like the a orbits of xi actually shadows the f orbits of yi, because that's the unique orbits, like always contained in a small neighborhood of that. So this makes you, you have no choice, but maps each hy, each every yi to zero. 
right? Because that's that's your orbit. That's the thing shadows the thing. And so we all know like uh, the 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 cons the construction of the conjugacy actually much must, must maps each yi to zero. But this tells you, okay, that's impossible because it's not a homeomorphism anymore. You maps different points to zero. So that gives you like, it's not structurally stable. You couldn't have anything to, to, to be topological conjugate in, in, in these settings, right? Okay, it's just some local perturbation. okay. Yeah. And so later, and Felix introduced the structural stability in the orbit space. And actually you can show like, for, for this orbit space, and you, you induce actually a sigma f with the shift map, right? Shift map to, to make the, the word of xi to xi plus one. And then for any g, which is c1 close to, to, to your f, you can find a homeomorphism. But right now is the homeomorphism is on the orbit space. So in the orbit space, you are structurally stable and you can have the conjugacy. Okay, but please be careful, just said, like this homeomorphism in the orbit space, usually you couldn't project down on the zero section on the manifolds. Okay, so that's the thing. But yeah, you have you still have some kind of structural stability of analysis of maps. Okay, so we have some main problems. It's like we have an analysis of map whose linear part is n one one one, and the question is when we have the topological conjugacy to its linear path. That's a nature question, right? We, when it has that. And moreover, we have something is like when two are not of maps on, on the two torus and they are homotopic with the same linear path. And when they are topological conjugates, it would be quite nature to ask these things because Thus, we already know everything about for anos of diffeomorphisms on torus. We know everything, but for, for anos of maps. And also I want to introduce an example by Felix is about like that. You, you have N111 is actually on three torus and you have N111 in here on two torus and put some N here. And it's actually a special anos of maps. Sorry, special means like you have integrable unstable bundles, I have said before. And when you have some kind of, you can put n big enough and for any x you fix in T3, you can find some f which is C1 close to A, such that you, thus you make small perturbations of your, of your A and you can have your f and which that in this point, you have like a lot of unstable bundles. Okay, because you choose different negative orbits, you give an different unstable bundles. And all these unstable bundles, and if you look at in the Grassmann manifold, it actually contains a non-trivial curve. Okay, it contains non-trivial curve. That means like your unstable bundles is something you can move continuously. You have a lot of unstable bundles. That's the thing. Okay, that is some, some example tells you, okay, like for, for, for a lot of maps, like things may be, very complicated and I, we don't know what we are having. And so 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you, uh, Felix said, if you don't have even have some kind of curves, curves, yeah. You may have some. Oh, yes. You, yeah. So you may have a lot of also uncountable, but it's a countable subset. Yeah, it may not a continuous. Yes, but a countable set and also uncountable many, many things, right? Yes. And okay. 40 years ago and Ali and Fernando and they, they showed proved something like for transitive analysis of maps, and also, of course, uh, non, non immutable And either you have an unst integrable, unstable bundle that's, we say, special, or you can find a residual subset on the manifold such that on every point in this subset, you have infin infinitely many unstable directions. You have infinitely many unstable bundles, depend on different negative orbits. That's, that gives a very sharp dichotomy for. for Okay. 
Now, that's our first result, which we give uh, necessary and uh, sufficient conditions for tells you like uh, just uh, when you have uh, to be an anosov map and then you are topological conjugates to your linear path. And this is equivalent to like your unstable is integrable. If and only if you are spectrum rigid in the stable bump, like all the stable, all the periodic points of F is stable Lyapunov exponents, like in the stable bundle, Lyapunov exponents in the stable bundle is equal to the Lyapunov exponents of its linear path. Okay, that's if and only if. Okay. Uh, actually, we prove like the same holes if you are, uh, you are irreducible and also like you have one dimensional stable bundles. That's just some, something actually proved the same. And please notice here, we don't require like our F to be close to its linear path. No, we just use, we just have some, something a little bit below. Okay. Yeah, that is like for the one dimensional bundles. And then for higher dimensional things, we also have something similar, but we, we have some restrictions about the spectrum. Like we have an anoso, which is also irreducible. That's the matrix and uh, something also non invertible anoso of maps. And assume it has real simple spectrum in the stable bundle. That is all eigenvalues in the stable bundles are, are, one are all real and have different absolute values. That is, you have the splitting like here. Everyone is one dimension. Okay, and we want to, then we can string some F, which is uh, uh, C1 plus alpha smooth, and also C1 close to A. It is a local thing, it's a local perturbation. And we show like F topological conjugates to A, if and only if F is spectrum rigid in the stable bound. That means like you have a dominant splitting and this dominant splitting is also from one to K, K bundles like in the stable and EU. And in each one dimensional bundle, your Lyapunov exponents of your F are always equal to the Lyapunov exponents of A in the corresponding index bundles. Please notice here, like you have a dominant splitting like a diffeomorphism is already something non-trivial because as I said, like you can always have the stable bundle, but in the rest, every time in the rest, in general, you don't have it because it's determined by negative orbits, just like the splitting thing. But here I can tell you like, actually you have a truly bundles, the splitting, because in general for the rest uh, in the unstable you put together, it is usually like you just have a confute, which is invariant. You, do, you may don't have the unstable bundle. But we can tell you right right now. Actually, we can have a dominant splitting, and we can have the we must have the spectrum rigidity. Okay. Now let me explain some main philosophy for these things. Why we can we can have these things like you have the unstable bundle. Can why it is related to the stable exponents, and for different from the, like the anosov diffeomorphisms for a non-invertible anosov map. What is the strongest manifold? We can have some stable manifolds, right? We can have the stable foliation, stable manifolds. But that, that's the point in stable manifolds, like to, the, the iterate converge to zero. But the thing is like the strongest one is like after some iteration, they go to the same point. They are in the same pre-image of some point, right? That's the strongest manifold. So, when we have some topological conjugate to its linear path, that means like your unstable is integrable. This, and what's that mean? That meaning like your unstable bundle doesn't depends on your negative orbits. No matter how you choose your negative orbits, it gives you the same unstable bundle. So that's something very strong, very, right? It's very strong. And basically I just come here is like, they are equal you know, when, when something has these things. What's that mean? You, you can imagine it is something almost equivalent to like your unstable bundle is jointly integrable with your strongest stable manifolds because it doesn't depend on the choice of negative orbits. That means it is something rigid. No matter how you choose negative orbits, it will give you the same thing. So 
when I do this, I was just thinking, okay, it is some kind of joint integrability. Right now you have your unstable, it's joint integrable with your strongest stable manifolds. And so what? Just like we said for, for an of diffuse, we will have some spectrum rigidity in the weak stable. And what is the weak stable now? It's just your yes, because like your stable bundle, that's your, that's your weak stable. So that's all the main philosophy for, for, for the things. Okay, that, that's the main philosophy. And okay, I, I will now, I, I will give a short proof. And actually the proof is in some sense um, very, very, very easy in some sense. I, I want to say like, let's say you, you have some F, you have some, I want to show you like your F is T2 to T2, let's just put T2. And with some F star is equal to A equal to, I just put three, one, one. And what one, I want to show you like if like there exists a homeomorphism, which is T2 to T2 and such that, actually I want to homotopic identity, okay? And I, such that H composed with your F is equal to A composed with H. Then you have, I want to show like a stable of F, uh, E of F is equal to lambda S of A for any P, those periodic of F. And actually the proof, I just give a short proof. And actually the proof is very similar and even more easier to the things about uh, uh, for, to, 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 to the Anosov diffuse case. Why? It's just exactly the same. How could I do that? I, on, on, so on T2, thus I put some T2. Okay, right now, because you are not maps, you also have the shielding property. So basically all the things we played before can also work in this setting. So you pick some points, which is P and put some points like Q, such that you make like the lambda S P of F, which is almost equal to the minimal one. Okay, equal to almost minimal of like DF along to yes, right? The exponent, sorry. It's not, but by taking adaptive metric is almost, it's almost the, the minimal um, lambda S of F, like uh, some ergodic measures or something like that. That's the contracting the strongest one. And you put like lambda S Q of F, it's almost the maximal one, okay? Okay, that tells you, okay, this path is like in the state stable direction. It is contracting the smallest one. And this part contracting is weak. So right now you are conjugacy. You have some conjugacy H and you can the same like the conjugacy is also holder continuous. And for, and you know, like for A, it is some kind of algebraic and you can have some estimation such that you can pick a sequence of points of Xn, like maybe I will put X1 and X2, and you have some Xn, converge to Q such that there exists some kind of Xn, such that Fmn of Xn is equal to P and Xn also converge to Q. And actually here you can also get some few fainting approximation things tells you how close of this, of this point X and, and Q. And then we can play the game. How could we play? For Xn, we take some segments. We take some X segments here, small segments in the stable manifolds. And here, like I will denote it as Jn. And here also a small segments, like here as J, and what I say is like, you have, okay, I will write here. What you have is like, like FMN of JN is equal to FMN of J. Actually it's something contracting. And you can say like this contracting rate is almost like P. And this contracting rate of JN in first maybe KN steps, like this before, here in a small neighborhood of Q, the contracting rate is almost like a Q, 
okay? Because they are very close. And so that tells you like, actually for the length of F of Jn, it is actually equals what? Equal exponents of Kn times lambda SQ. Actually, I, I can write larger or equal them. And times exponentially like Mn minus Kn times lambda S of P, something like that. And you know, like your Mn of J is all is almost like almost like exponentially of mn times lambda s of p you have some contracting rate it's the same like the the things for different models but you know like something you want to be equal and you know like also the the, the conjugacy things tells you actually there exists a uniform delta such that you kn is larger than delta times mn that is something like before. And this gives you the contradiction, right? Because like the contracting for this one is very strong. And for here, you have a lot of steps contracting rate is weaker. And that gives you the proof. And notice like in, in this part, unlike that for and also diffuse, and in this part, the proof only needs F to be C1. You don't even know C1 plus R. Okay, but for the other side, you know. Okay, that's some simple, simple proof. And you can say, it's very similar, the same philosophy for, for the, like the first and second lecture things. Okay. And moreover, like we give this, also gives the complete answers to the, to the second problem. It's like, for well, less F and G be some home topic C1 plus atoms of maps, then we can show like F topologically conjugates to G here, I just restrict myself in, in some conjugacy homotopic identity, okay? And then for every P belongs to the periodic points of F, there exists a corresponding P prime of periodic points of G, such that they have the same exponents, stay, along stable bound. Okay, that's the stable bound. I will explain to you what is meaning of corresponding, okay? And here's the meaning of corresponding. Actually, like we have some for because for our f and g like they are topological conjugate in the universal cover because they have the same linear paths and but the conjugacy in the universal cover is not commuting with stack transformations so it's not can cannot be descendant to um, t2 so for this one and we can construct two different things first we can construct some leaf conjugacy about stable foliations so what's the meaning? So the meaning is like, we can have the, oh, sorry. So we can have a conjugacy, but it is on T2, uh, okay, modular F, S of F, and to T2 of modular F, S of F. And that is, and you have the quotient of F, and something okay let me see what do you see if conjugacy was uh, i just write some h2 okay like t2 of f s of g t2 of f, s, of g. so you you will have these things that is for the leaf space you have a conjugation what's that meaning more, more exactly and actually what's the leaf conjugacy truly meaning is like you can find some H, okay, I, I will still write tutor, sorry, T2 to T2, which is home topic to identity such that your H tutor maps F, S, F, X, the stable foliation of X to the stable foliation of G about H tutor of X. So you can have a conjugacy between the stable leaves that you, you have a leaf conjugacy. And this leaf conjugacy constructing is uh, exactly the same like Andy, what Andy does for partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms on torus is the leaf conjugacy. So when you have the leaf conjugacy, you can, you can tell us one thing. So if you have some periodic points of P, which belongs periodic point of F, right? So you will have a periodic stable leaf, right? That means like, if you have F pi P, 
of p is equal to p, then you what you get is pi p of like f s f of p is equal to f s f of p, right? That you have the stable leaf is also periodic. So by the conjugacy, you can constrain like f s uh, okay g at some points. Uh, okay, I just write a p prime. Okay, is equal to like h tilde f s f of p. So you, you map the stable leaf of your f to the stable leaf of your g. And this leaf is also periodic. That means you have g of pi p f s tilde g p prime is equal to itself. Yes. And you know, like in the stable manifolds, you are uniformly contracting. So right, this tells you actually you can choose p prime, which is belongs to periodic points of g. Okay, this belongs to the periodic point of g. And this gives you a corresponding meaning, a corresponding meaning things. On the other hand, for this h, you can also make the projection and it gives you some kind of a, a topological conjugacy in the orbit space. And in the orbit space, you can also have the corresponding periodic points, right? So that also works. Actually, we build some equivalence in, in, this, in this paper and how this uh, uh, conjugacy in the universal cover, conjug leaf conjugacy and the conjugacy in the orbit space, we make some equations for, for these things. Okay, and that's the corresponding things. And moreover, actually we can get a rigidity results tells you like, okay, if we have F and G to be two C R R of maps, and if they are topological conjugate by some H on T2, then the conjugacy is actually CR smooth along the stable foliation. That's the rigidity things. Like you have a topological conjugacy and the topological conjugacy actually gives you your CR smooth along the stable direction. That is the rigidity parts for, for these things. Okay. Oh, any questions, comments? Is yeah 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 it's like a uh, uh, quite like the Levy six theorem, like uh, in, in uh, yeah. Thank you. okay. And moreover, we actually give some kind of a smooth classification for the Jacobian rigidity. Is that oh yeah yeah maybe yeah yeah yes yes yeah okay. Uh, yes, and we have like two CR of maps and they are topological conjugate. And if in every corresponding periodic points, they have the same Jacobian, like in the Jacobian, and then you are actually CR smooth, uh, but CR star smooth here, because like when R is, is integer, then you are R minus one plus ellipsis. And when R is not integer, you are R, because here we use the Juhnin theory you can imagine because we get like the smoothness along the stable we get smoothness along the stable direction and like uh, uh, actually this jacobian rigidity things give me give us some rigidity along the unstable direction so then you play the truth theory gives you like the cs smoothness cs star smoothness okay that's the same okay I will give a, a illustrator of the main ideas for the proof of the topological controversy. Like, how could we get like this? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And in here, we want to show like you have periodic delta along the stable bundle to show like actually have the topological conjugacy on T2. So because right now we already have the global conjugacy in the universal cover and you have these commuting things. And, but the question is how could we make the, the conjugacy on R2 to be commuting with the deck transformation, right? That's what we want to say, want to show. If you have this commuting with deck transformation, then you already have the, the things on T2, the conjugacy on T2. So what we use is some kind of Lewis theory on the orbit space. And 
notice here, like at first we have the periodic data on the stable bundle is on the is decided by the leaf config thing here, and we first try to translate the things to the periodic data along the contricacy on the orbit space. And then, okay, periodic data on the leaf contricacy and by leaf contricacy, and we translate it to the periodic data in the orbit spaces. And then we, that's, and we can apply some leaf theory in, in this setting in the orbit space, but of course you, you need to, to prove it again. And then you just translate the things about some, some kind of uh, homologous things in the universal cover. Okay, you need to build it in the universal cover. And you, then you try to show like your edge, like the contribuency in the universal cover, it is Lipschitz along the stable foliation. It's Lipschitz along stable foliation. And this will helps you to get like, you are commuting with the deck transformation. So, so you will go through this part. And I think most of this part is quite similar like Andrew's work about like the smooth conjugacy of and also of diffeomorphism in three torus. That's mostly, like, most of this, but you, you need to handle of, of, uh, in the orbit space and also like in, in the universal cover to, to handle these things. It's not likely and also diffuse things. Yes, and, and to get it to be commuting, with the deck transformation. Okay. And okay. Conversely, how could you get the topological conjugacy on T2 to get the periodic data along stable, along stable bundles? Yes. And here you, you, you can you, what you need to do is to get like a dichotomy. The dichotomy is like this: you have an analysis of maps on T2. Then either you conjugate to your to your linear part, or you are U accessible. Here, what's the meaning of U accessible? That means for every pair of points, you can it can be connected by finite and many unstable manifolds. What's that mean? Okay, because right now. Because here, like in general, you the case all case like means like you at every point you may have a lot of different unstable bundles. So you give a negative orbit, it will give you some local unstable manifolds. So for this, what U accessible means like for, for any points X and Y, you can choose the unstable manifolds of X corresponding to some negative orbits of X you have an unstable. Okay, here you may have a take points and you look at this point. This point is, this unstable manifold of this point is the same negative orbits with X and you change the negative orbits. It may have another unstable. Okay, you may have another unstable and you go here for another unstable of this point, also unstable. You just go different unstables and it comes to here. Right. You, you give different unstable manifolds and you, you take the path from X to Y. And you can see like it is actually looks very the same, like the same to the, to the case of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, but in dimension three. Why? Because every time you change of the negative orbits, it's just like you go through the strongest stable manifolds because you take the different negative orbits, right? But they will map to the same points, so they are in the same, uh, the same strongest stable manifold. So actually, like like that is you take U, and here it is S strongest S. Take U S U and the strongest S. It's not the the stable for the, the weak stable things. And this is you can see like it's just like in three dimensional partially hyperbolic and also of diffeomorphisms, and either you are S U integrable or you are accessible. So that's the thing, that's the parallel things. Okay. And so you have these two things and you want to show like both cases implies you have the periodic data along the stable models and or, or in other words, you have smooth conjugacy along the state, right? So how to do these things? And actually for the conjugate to the linear one, I have just approved to you, right? Because if you conjugate, you, you have the same one with the linear part I already showed you. 
And at the other side, actually, for the U access ball is actually more easier. It's the whole manifold. Ah, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, it is always open. It always open. Yeah. Yes. So, and for, for this accessible case, and you can prove like two, two points you can access by finite steps. So right now, you know, like you have the conjugacy along the, you have the topological conjugacy along the state, right? But the conjugacy is in one dimensional point, uh, one dimensional manifolds in the stable. So you can always find a smooth point, right? You can always find some point in smooth. Let's say your X is a smooth point. And you look at the holonomy map, and you know, like the homology map is C1, right? So this point after the conjugacy, it is also smooth. And it extended everywhere. Here is also smooth, and you are down. So that's some very simple and very easier things. It's just when you give the dichotomy and you can give the thing, everything. You, you just find a smooth point and the topological conjugacy gives you, you are actually smooth everywhere because the conjugacy preserves the negative orbits, preserves the unstable manifold, preserves everything actually. So that tells you, okay, actually in some sense, like your topological conjugacy is, is something truly very strong things. And so that gives you like, you have the rigidity along the stable foundation. Okay. And, ah, because like you have a homeomorphism, it's a homeomorphism down two segments. You can always find a smooth point that they must not. So, yes, and okay, I think I'm stuck here. You. Great. We have time for more questions. I might run along with a microphone if you want. Oh, thanks. Oh. <clears throat> I propose to look at the torus as the torus d uh, t d and c d ah as a set of points where absolute values of co consecutive uh, coordinates is equal to one yeah. and then you can perturb it in c d uh -huh. not only inside the same torus okay and uh, Make interesting generalization. I wrote with Urbanski in exercises in my book uh, something about okay. this. So, but we didn't continue it. So oh. okay. Look at this. Uh, another remark is that in subsequent paper, also in seventies, I started axiom A. Uh -huh. And again, a lot of these ideas can be generalized and studied in axiom A okay. aspect. And axiom A does not exclude singularities outside non-wandering set. Okay. And there are people from Uruguay, I don't remember the name, Ravella, and also Pierre Berger, who studied this continued study in their papers, including what happens with stability outside ah, Omega. And they also solve even some problems in this Axiom A paper. So it's another interesting area to be developed. In. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, on slide 24, theorem 4, I want to know if H is homotopic to identity. Ah, yes. Here is like a homotopic to identity ah. because what, all, all these things, all the conjugacy in these two theories, what, what, what we studied is the conjugacy in the universal cover by big H in R2 and it's uh, uh, bounded with identity. So all these things, what we do is like restricted ourselves in the homotopic to identity. Okay, so I think this is similar to uh, a result by me in Regis Varão because okay. we have the same hypothesis. Okay. I, the, your proof is different and there is more uh, details on the regularity, but okay. yeah. just so you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Still time for more? Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, just a comment. It's easier to compare the accessibility with the convertible setting when you look to the picture on the limit inver inverse limit space, because uh, the stable direction is just the fiber of mm -hmm. that uh, bundle, yeah. and yeah. The, the picture is clearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 this sure. is Martin's philosophy. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, it's just like you make the fibers like in the negative orbits, these things, and yeah. Yeah, you have super contraction on the fibers. Thank you. Now, it's just to say that in the name of the organizer, I would like to thank E for the this mini course given here. And uh, I hope that you had uh, enjoyed the, the mini course, okay? Right. Thank you, Diti. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you all. We now get a long coffee break until 20 after 10. Enjoy and come back energized for another mini course. <laughs>